Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll talk about the various joints of the foot. The joints of the foot are going to be between the bones of the foot. Now the bones we've already discussed these are the tarsal bones, the metatarsal and the phalangeal bones. Let me give you an overall view of the joints in the foot. There are intertarsal joints that are formed between the various tarsal bones. Then there is the tarsometatarsal joint, which is formed between this group and the metatarsal group. The tarsometatarsal joint is a plain synovial joint. Then we have the intermetatarsal joints. As you can see, the metatarsal are also linked up with each other. The intermetatarsal is also a plain synovial joint. Then we have the one group with the next group, which is the metatarsal phalangeal joint. The metatarsal phalangeal joint allows the movement of flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. And finally, the interphalangeal joints, couple of phalanges are missing here, but the interphalangeal joints are between the phalanges. These joints are hinge joints, which means they only allow the movement of flexion and extension, just like our interphalangeal joints of the fingers only flexion and extension then so overall these are the joints of the foot most importantly we're going to discuss today are the tarsal joints or intertarsal joints what are the intertarsal joints there are many but we're going to discuss the most important ones and one of them the first one is the subtalar joint subtalar joint means a joint that lies below this talus bone subtalar joint which is mostly, or you, you can also call it a talocalcaneal joint. Then we have a talocalcaneal navicular joint. Then we have a calcaneal cuboid joint. Then we have several other joints. Of all of these, we're only going to discuss the three main joints. First, let's talk about the subtalar joints. So what is the subtalar joint? The subtalar joint is basically, before I tell you what it is, there are three joints between the talus and the calcaneous bone. This is the calcaneus, this is the talus. Between these two, there are like three facets that are articulating. An anterior, a medial, and a posterior facet. Anterior, medial, and posterior joints between the talus and calcaneum. The two joints in front, the anterior and medial talocalcanean joints, they're separated from the posterior talocalcanean joint by this sinus star psi. So over here, I can show you, this is the posterior talocalcanean joint, while this is the sinus tarsi and then these are the anterior and medial joints between the talus and calcaneum bone. I really hope you're able to see. So the subtalar joint is basically this joint, which is the posterior most joint between the talus and calcaneum bone. This is known as a subtalar joint. So the most posterior talocalcanean joint is known as the subtalar joint. This is plain synovial joint. The subtalar joint has a couple of ligaments and these are the obviously fibrous capsule which almost every joint has. Other ligaments include the medial, medial and lateral talocalcanean ligaments, the interosseous talocalcanean ligament and finally the cervical ligament. Of all of these ligaments, the most important is the interosseous talocalcanean ligament. This is the strongest ligament over here in the sinus tarsi. It is more medial, while the cervical ligament is lateral to the sinus tarsi. The strongest ligament is interosseous talocalcanean ligament, and during eversion, it is taut, while the cervical ligament is taut during inversion of the foot. Now, let's talk about the next joint. This is the talocalcaneonavicular. This is the navicular, talocalcaneonavicular joint. So basically the joint between the talus and calcaneous bone, as I mentioned earlier, that it had anterior medial articulations and a posterior articulation. The posterior was known as a subtalar joint. Now, the anterior medial articulation between talus and calcaneous bone these two are involved in the formation of the talocalcaneonavicular joint. So these become a separate joint. So the talocalcaneonavicular joint is a ball and socket joint. How? Because the head of the talus is going to form the ball and the socket will be formed by the navicular bone partly and partly by your calcaneous bone. So this is a ball and socket joint. Other parts that are forming the socket will be the 
spring ligament and the medial limb of the bifurcate ligament that I will explain to you shortly. Talocalcaneo navicular joint have a couple of ligaments that we're going to talk about. First is the fibrous capsule that every joint almost has. Then we have the spring ligament. Now the spring ligament is a very important ligament. It is a very strong ligament, all right? And it basically extends from the anterior margin of the sustentaculum telae all the way to the plantar surface of the navicular bone. So it's like that. Hence, you can see that the head of the talus is also going to fit into this spring ligament. So you can see the socket is formed by these three areas, the navicular spring ligament and the calcaneus. So the spring ligament is very important because it forms the medial arch of the foot. What is an arch of the foot? As you can see, the foot is not ever going to be flat. It is going to be arched so that you can walk on uneven ground. So spring ligament is the most important ligament involved in maintaining the medial longitudinal arch of the foot. Now let's talk about the next ligament of the talocalcaneo navicular joint, which is known as the medial limb of the bifurcate ligament. So what is the bifurcate ligament? If we see here, let's remove the talus bone out of the way. What will we see from the top view? We will see the calcaneum navicular on the medial side and the cuboid on the lateral side. It is Y-shaped, all right? It is Y-shaped. It extends its or its stem is placed on the calcaneum bone. Its medial limb is attached to the navicular bone and its lateral limb is attached to the cuboid bone. The lateral limb is taking part in calcaneo-cuboid joint while the medial limb of this bifurcate ligament is taking part in the talocalcaneo-navicular joint. Other ligaments that help hold this joint together are the interosseous ligament that we've already talked about, interosseous talocalcaneal ligament and a talonavicular ligament. Now let's move ahead and talk about the calcaneo-cuboid joint. The calcaneo-cuboid joint is a saddle variety of joint. The, the calcaneo-cuboid joint has multiple ligaments like a fibrous capsule, obviously. Then it has the lateral limb of, of the bifurcate ligament. And then we have the long plantar and the short plantar ligaments. These two are attached on the plantar surface of the two bones. Let's talk about how they're attached. The long plantar ligament runs from the calcaneus bone. It gets attached to the cuboid bone and it runs even more ahead to attach to the middle three metatarsal bones. So this is the long plantar ligament. So it's coming from here all the way till the three middle metatarsal bones. All right. Then we have the short plantar ligament. Short plantar ligament only extends from the calcaneus to the cuboid and, and it lies deep to the long plantar ligament. So these were the two plantar ligaments that are involved in calcaneo-cuboid articulation. The two plantar ligaments are very important and the most important structures maintaining the arch of the foot. So now I've talked about the main intertarsal joints. What were these? The subtalar joint, the talocalcaneo-navicular joint, and the calcaneo-cuboid joint. There are other joints also between the tarsal bones, but these were the most important. So what are the movements that occur on these joints? Subtalar permits the most important movements in the foot known as the inversion and eversion. It's necessary to know the axis of this movement. What is the axis of inversion and eversion? The axis of inversion and eversion is very important. It is an oblique axis that runs upwards, forwards and medially from passing from the back of the calcaneus the sinus tarsi, you all remember, and finally, supramedial part of the neck of the talus. So it's very important to know these landmarks. What is the axis of inversion and eversion? So it'll go like that. So you can see it's going upwards, forwards, and medially towards the medial side. So it will pass through the back of the calcaneus, through the sinus tarsi, and will emerge out from the supramedial aspect of the neck of the talus. So what is inversion and eversion? Inversion means the raising up of the medial border of the foot and eversion is the raising up of the lateral border of the foot. So the talocalcaneo navicular and calcaneo cuboid are also involved in these movements. Apart from this, the tarsal, metatarsal and intermetatarsal joint also assist in inversion and eversion. The muscles carrying out inversion and eversion are inversion is carried out by the tibia, two tibialis muscles, the tibialis anterior and tibialis posterior. And the eversion is carried out by the two peroni muscles, the peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. So that was all we needed to know about the joints of the foot. Really hope you understood well. 
Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching.